everybody. Hello. Um, my name is, well, my stage name is Janae Chantel. So, um, the piece that I'm going to be reading for you tonight is uh, entitled Uplift and Inspire. Dear Lord, dear Lord, I just want to uplift and inspire. Take your people higher. Show them what I've been through so they can get closer to you. Dear Lord, dear Lord, I just want to change the world. Show your people how you kept me ever since I was a little girl. I witnessed my mother's death, live with domestic violence, saw my dad battle with cancer. Man, he fought a good fight. I've been shot by my own brother, by accident, of course. And as years go by, I just love my brother more and more. Dear Lord, dear Lord, I just want to give your people hope. I've been through it all, and yet still I stand. Clothed in my right mind, head on straight, with the desire to be great while praising your name. Dear Lord, dear Lord, I just need to uplift and inspire. To tell your struggling people to stay strong and they'll make it through. Remain strong, my sister. <clears throat> Baby, you gonna make it. God knows what you can bear. And trust me, you can take it. Dream big, my young brother. Don't be another victim to the system. Just know when God is by your side, you can never fail a mission. Dear Lord, dear Lord, just allow me to uplift and inspire. Take people into my mind and show them what I've been through. Allow me to let them get closer to you. Dear Lord, dear Lord, I just have the desire to uplift and inspire, to share my testimony, to give your people hope, to tell them that they can dream and that their current situation isn't the end of the road. Dear Lord, dear Lord, just let me uplift and inspire. Lord, I gotta uplift and inspire. Amen. Amen. Word, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. Right, left, right, left, jab, uppercut, hook. My dad's voice rings in my ears as my seven-year-old self hits the black, big black punching bag in our basement. My little fists are clenched tightly in blue boxing gloves as I execute the moves my dad commands. The smell of mothballs and aged wood saturate my nose as I throw a right, left, right, left, jab, uppercut, hook. Sunlight peeks through the basement windows, bringing warmth to its cold darkness. The weights, workout station, in the entertainment system become brighter as the yellow light hits them. Right, left, right, left, jab, uppercut, hook. I feel his presence to the left of me, watching me execute the moves, making sure that as time moves on, I will always know how to protect myself. Right, left, right, left, jab, uppercut, hook. My little fists keep punching the bag the way he tells me. My breathing is getting faster, arms weaker, but I keep punching away. Stop, my dad says. Come in. I walk over to him, my chest heaving up and down. He looks at me intently, his dark brown eyes looking me over. Guards up, he commands. I pull my fist just inches away from my face creating a box-like figure. My dad leans down towards me and locks his hands around my wrist. He pulls me closer to him. Never start a fight, he advises me. But always protect yourself. 
I stand in our bathroom's doorway watching my dad cut my cousin's hair. I watch as he bites his tongue and takes the clippers through my cousin's head. I smile. My dad stands out in the pink peach colored bathroom. The bright color of the bathroom contrasts against his dark chocolate skin. He looks up at me and sees me watching him. He gives me that smile that I love so much. A flash of his straight, curly white teeth. I hear it, my other cousins throughout the house laughing and playing. It is a common thing for him to get all of my cousins to have them spend the weekend in our house. They're not as fortunate as, my, as me and my brother. Their fathers aren't present in their lives. So my dad steps up and becomes that male figure. My dad finishes my, finished cutting my cousin's hair and brushes the fallen pieces of hair off his neck. My cousin hurries up and jumps out of the chair. Get back here, boy, my dad says in the authoritative voice of his. I smile a little because I know what is coming next. It's a ritual of his. My cousin groans. Oh, Uncle James. He slowly climbs back up in the chair. My dad gives his devious smile and pretends like he's spinning into his hand. My cousin scrunches up his face in anticipation. My dad stretches his hand back and smacks the back of my cousin's freshly cut head. My cousin flinches up, frowns, and then rubs the back of his head as he climbs out of the chair. My dad looks over at me and smiles. Who's next? I sit in the living room on my dad's lap. He wears a white beater and blue jean shorts. He makes his muscles in his chest jump, and I try to hit, hit them, always missing the side that jump. I laugh as I play the game that we always play. My dad smiles at me and runs his finger through my hair. My little princess, he says. I smile and rest my head on his chest. He takes my chin and makes me look at him. A man should always treat you like the queen you are. I stand in the kitchen later on that day and watch as my dad and stepmom argue. Over what? I'm not sure. But I realize that there are two sides to a person. A good side and a bad side. Right now, I am witnessing the bad side of my dad. I watch silently as he, my dad pushes my stepmom up against the wall and slaps her repeatedly. I flinch every time he delivers the blows. For a moment, his eyes meet mine, and what he said earlier enters my mind. A man should always treat you like the queen you are. I realize right there, at the age of seven, that a man should never put his hands on his queen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you.